Good morning, John. Good morning. We're here to see the next step of this synthetic procedure. How does it look? Well, it's an orange powder, and we're just going to let it settle. It's been Stop stirring overnight. Stirring. Mm -hmm. We just have a clock in here. I guess we don't anymore. Grab the THF. Okay, so now it's settled. Stopper has expanded nicely overnight. Just gonna cant off the ether the best we can. Give it another minute, it will settle a bit more. So we have molybdenum in the plus four oxidation state now, huh? This, the orange precipitate should be the tetrachloride. And tin dichloride is the expected tin containing byproduct. It's probably about as well as we're going to do to get rid of the ether. Pour off a little product. And we're just going to get this stirring again. And well, I have THF. And uh, I guess we wanted to do additions on this side. So I add it on. I just want to pour it right here. Roughly 200 mils of THF, maybe closer to 250. And this is just going to stir for, uh, it's no more than I want, it's fine. More THF doesn't hurt in this case. It's kind of like washing the product a little early. Um, so we're just going to stir this for three hours about, maybe uh, Maybe we'll just stir it until 12.30, so that's 3 hours and 15 minutes. And uh, maybe we'll take on a darkish green color initially, and then purple. Once it looks entirely purple, we generally filter it. And the purple is a uh, color is due to a soluble uh, bridging chloride byproduct that Ronaldo Pauli has identified by NMR studies. But it's just better to let this reaction to make sure it's complete than to stop it early. If we stop it early, we get stuff that we can't use in the next step. And if we let it run a little too long, then we just have some soluble byproducts that we can remove from the rather insoluble trichloride THF. Okay, well, if we're going to stir now for a few hours, we'll pause it and resume video at that time. So we're going to take the pot of glass mark out of the oven. Reach in there and need a
so often passed through the presence of the box is dipped out over night. Probably 200 degrees. Got two antechambers there, John. Second reduction of the Mali 4 to the Mali 3. And uh, what we can do is we can stop the stirring. And I guess it's better to keep it on for now. We're going to filter the, 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 the purple solution away from the precipitate. Well, it should be purple. Is it purple? I don't, I don't. I'm not one to judge the colors. The filtrate looks purple. Oh. And we just don't want to turn the flask upside down because the tin would then also exit the flask. We have little pellets of tin contaminating our stuff. and a 16 mil front. Have you just got a static vacuum on the suction flask? No, it's a dynamic vacuum. It's just the, the fine particles are taking a little bit of time. Use this THF to wash initially. the uh, product and we're going to wash it twice with THF maybe three times see get rid of all that purple stuff to, yeah, and also tin dichloride has solubility in THF and this tin can be saved and recycled for a subsequent step for uh, a repeated synthesis can you hold that there and I'll zoom in on it Typically, we would put the flask in, into a vial and label it recycled tin. What I'm going to do is uh, break this vacuum, stir this up.
we want to obtain is a light orange material from this prep. It typically takes on kind of a salmon color. Do you want to get the uh, foam down? And, uh, Mm. Yeah. And we typically don't take a proton anomars of this material because it's any substance that it's soluble in, it tends to uh, lose the THF and, and subsequently dimerizing. So uh, Ronaldo Pauli has reported the uh, proton NMR chemical shifts of this substance in the dimer that forms when it stays in solution for long periods of time in, uh, I believe, chloroform. And you see paramagnetically shifted resonances that correspond to the three THFs. I'm not aware of any NQR studies with this substance. Does this have a FAC or a MER configuration? No, I thought that would be in our caption. It's a, it's a meridional configuration of the chlorides. Yes, indeed which corresponds to a, a meridional configuration of the THFs as well. How much of the material do you lose when you're washing it like this? Well, the material is light orange, and the filtrate is pretty much colorless, so Assumption's not a lot. We, we lose material by stirring it for long periods of time. But if it's stirred for too little time, then the conversion is incomplete, and that's, that's a bigger problem. And I think this, this stirred vigorously for uh, about three and a half hours, and, and during the Part of the time in your way, we just stop the stirring so it wouldn't be stirring for four hours straight. So, I think we're done washing it with THF, but uh, after washing it with THF several times, the substance takes a while to dry. And uh, synthetic chemists frequently are busy people, so I like to wash it with diethyrether twice, which removes that uh, the THF that's just sitting around the molecules of monotrichloride THF. So instead of pumping THF off of the powder, we'll be pumping off diethyrether, which is quite a bit quicker. Wash it twice. And now we just need to pump the uh, powder to dryness. We can do that in the fridge just by covering it, but it's actually it tends to be more efficient to just transfer it to another filtration flask. 
do that to save a little time. While you're doing that, John, maybe you can say a few words about how our solvents are purified. So the solvents, we, we collect them in these specialized, custom-made containers that we've designed for an SPS system that is a, did you get a good shot? Mm -hmm. That is a, manufactured by Contour Gas Company. And the uh, method is sometimes referred to as the uh, Grubbs method for solvent purification. And interested viewer can read about it in an organometallics article. And it's co-authored by Robert Grubbs that describes uh, the use of alumina and uh, copper melted upon alumina to remove water and trace oxygen from solvents to to render them both uh, water free and uh, oxygen free on this for just a minute so that powder looks nice and light orange now yeah, and we have exactly one vial left This will take, I'll usually pump on it for a few minutes, but we'll just weigh it out and then pump on the vial. That way, if the mass doesn't change, we can take a video cut. It's usually somewhat obvious once it's dried out. And uh, this substance, once it's obtained, uh, may be stored cold if one desires. Uh, typically in this lab, we use it within a day or two of its preparation. So we'll plan to make Molly Trisanilide with it tomorrow. And for that reason, uh, it's usually just stored warm since it's pretty much made and used immediately thereafter. So that's our first vial. We're going to have to figure out how to get more into it, but that's 11.4 grams. That's 11.9 grams, which 12 grams is about a typical yield from, from this procedure. We'll just, nice work, so we'll... We're going to pump on this a little bit longer before we cap it and store it overnight. Mm -hmm. And we will note tomorrow if the... Uh, mass has changed significantly since we're going to use all of this in a Aramali Trisanilide prep. But it's 
likely that it won't change more than a tenth or two. And the Kim wipe is there just because uh, with fine powder sometimes there's a problem of mm -hmm. the powder getting pulled up into the uh, the glass. So, uh, that is not required. Okay. Unless John. you want to keep everything clean. John, that was a great synthesis. Yeah. We'll resume tomorrow for the next step in the prep of Molly Tris Okay. Morning.